So the first thing you need to do is you need to reset the BIOS to default on this motherboard. Once you've reset it back to default here, you can either use the CMOS default or you can do, I didn't just load the default optimized ones. You don't want to follow these settings to get it exactly right. This needs to be exactly the same, but in order to run eight GPUs. Once you've set those settings, the two that are different are the last two. One is to enable you to boot from LAN, and the other one is to bring it back to the last state. You don't need those, but they're advisable if you're using it remotely. So now we've set the motherboard up, we need to go into Windows and complete this setup. So the next thing you want to do is you want to download this display driver installer. This removes all the drivers on that motherboard and that Windows operating system. As soon as you're going to do this, you need to do this, otherwise it will cause you a problem. You might get six GPUs in it, maybe seven, but normally you won't get eight in it. You need to make sure it's completely clear before you do this. So download this display driver uninstaller. Put the link in the description of where this is. Once you downloaded that, extract that into a folder, create one DDU, and then run the ddu.exe, and then run display driver uninstall. You might need 7-zip here to uninstall it or WinZip to run the exe, but it should be okay. Ignore the update if there's one, doesn't really matter. Continue to click OK. Click Clean and Restart. Highly recommend. This is only one. This will now pull off all the old NVIDIA drivers that you've got or AMD drivers. Once it's rebooted, right click on the Windows icon and go to Device Manager or just locate it as you would do normally and go to Display Drivers and you should only have the HD 510 internal one here loaded. So what you need to do now is put your first GPU in the board, we need to power it down, put the first GPU in, and then boot it back up. As you'll see there, I've put it into the M2 PCIe 1, and I'll put the next one to M2 PCIe 2, and that's to ensure that those two recognize first. If you put them in last, especially PCIe 2, sometimes it will not recognize, so my tip is here to put those two in first. Now to install the NVIDIA driver, just download the latest one from the website. So you'll see after the first reboot, the 1066 gigabit is now recognized. You'll need to do this for each card. You need to do them individually. You need to plug the card into the PCIe slot. You need to reboot it. You need to let it detect it. Then you need to restart it, make sure it's detected, and then power it off. I'm going to show you the full process for this, but it's going to take you around an hour and a half, two hours to do this. I'm going to show you each step that you need to do still. So when you install the second card into the M2 underscore two PCIe slot that you've created, you then have to wait about 10 minutes for each one to install because it can corrupt it because it's still installing the driver. Although here under the display adapters, it says it's installing it. But it's installed, it isn't always installed. A few little quick tips here or things to look for if you can't get the second M.2 card to kick in. I suggest you do, like I say, the two M.2 cards first before you do any other PCI slots. These are the trickiest ones to get. Once you get these two going, the other ones should be a lot easier to install. So one of the things to make sure is you get the M.2 card is actually in the slot properly. Sometimes it doesn't quite get in there. If you push it quite, I guess, vertically, it, it, it doesn't always catch the right connections. So sometimes you need to put in a bit of an angle to push it down and then it will connect a little bit better. Another one is try Gen 1 and Gen 2 options in the BIOS if they're not working and they're not detecting. Make sure you've got a 006C riser. Well, this must go into the M.2 underscore 2 slot. This riser here is the crucial piece. You must have this or that other riser will not detect in the PCIe for the BIOS. I've had loads of problems with that. I'm going to try different M.2 cards if you're having problems with them. And also swap them around in different slots. 
So sometimes you might find one of them will work in one of the M.2s, but not the other one, so we're swapping around. One of the things to take note is that this has taken me about five hours to get these two to detect. You might be luckier, but bear in mind this can take a while for them to get detected on this board. The first one's usually quite straightforward, but the second one can be a pain. So bear with it, you need a lot of patience. Good luck with your install, and I'll high speed the rest now and show you exactly the eight card setup and what the hash is at the end of it as well. So let's get on with the cards installing here. So there it is, the Asus Prime Z270-P Revision 1 motherboard here running 8 GPUs. If you want to know the overclock settings of these GPUs, I'll put the links in the description to below to all the settings I've been using for each different card. I'll soon be doing the Asus B250, which is 19 GPUs. If you want to see something else, put it in the description below. Check out some other mining videos. If you want to know the full rig spec, I'll put a link in the description below. And until then, Thanks for watching, I'll see you all again. Thanks a lot, bye bye.